As of right now, spread across the entire world, there are 1.7 billion adults that need basic financial services. They don't even have a bank account. The lack of traditional banking services impacts the population's ability to grow socioeconomically, and a financial system is imperative to elevating the quality of life of these people. And no good deed goes unrewarded, because there is an estimated $10 trillion locked up in dead capital alone, making this one of the most profitable problems to solve in the world. And that's why the race to dominate the DeFi space in crypto is on. So how do we start? How do we go about implementing decentralized financial systems for the unbankable? The first step in this process is finding the right place to implement this technology. If we take a look at this map, we can see that Africa has high population densities without access to traditional banking services. So how do we go about getting these financial services to people? Well, of the 1.7 billion adults that don't have a bank account, more than 1 billion of them have a mobile phone. In this day and age, there is no need for massive infrastructure development to provide traditional banking services. The tools we need to solve this problem are already in our hand. 80% of Africa's population is under 30, which means barriers for implementing this tech is relatively low. People already know how to do a lot of what's required to make this work. This presents Africa as a top candidate for fintech, and if you couple that with the fact that Africa has the second largest GDP growth, which represents growth in the middle class, you can see how this is an ideal market. GDP growth and the middle class are the key ingredients to seeing a flourishing financial system and the future of lending and insurance. But there is a problem. For as optimal of a place as Africa is, they have some of the highest concentrations of fraud and corruption in the world. And that makes it incredibly hard to operate a sustainable financial system in these regions. And that's not to say that there are no banks in Africa, because there are, but their ability to provide for people is severely limited. When surveying members of the financial industry in Sub-Sahara Africa, more than half of them reported falling victim to fraud in the last five years, along with other high numbers of bribery and corruption, regulatory breach, identity theft, and money laundering. So in order to provide fintech solutions for the unbankable, we actually need to solve another problem first. Documentation and identification in the form of digital IDs. Digital IDs are the cornerstone of establishing one of the most important things when it comes to lending, which is trust. Trust that you are who you say you are, and trust that you have the assets and documentation you claim to, all while having the ability to be held accountable. Traditional IDs are easily counterfeited, lack any kind of standards across borders, while also having no legitimacy when looking at international capital. With government support, enabling digital IDs can simplify the state-to-citizen interactions and provide internationally recognized identification for its people. When we look at this image, we can see that nearly 400 million unbanked people are excluded specifically because of a lack of digital IDs. 36% of the adult population is not registered for credit, which if resolved would enable $400 billion in lending. And that's what Cardano is trying to do. It's trying to give hundreds of millions of people the advantages that people in developing worlds already have. The utilization of this technology could allow someone in Africa to gain legal documentation for a piece of land or a house they've been living in for decades and leverage those assets to get a loan to start a small business. And Cardano is making big moves right now in the space with the recent release of their decentralized identity entity solution known as Atala Prism. And this is something you can experience right now. Atala Prism has released an app and it's available on Android and iPhone. You can download that and then head over to their website atalaprism.io and interact with their interactive city map to experience how this would work firsthand. And for as cool as this is right now, it still needs proper implementation through government channels and actual adoption from people in these situations. The continent of Africa is massive with many different countries, so it was important to narrow down which country would be the starting place. One big determining factor was IOHK has had direct company presence in Ethiopia for many years now and has been involved in several initiatives at the country and national level. And as you can see, Ethiopia ranks high in terms of potential for improvement through digital IDs. What we see looking at this image is a high population of people without IDs, high fraud levels, and a lot of people in offline situations. This is important because we need to understand the reality of using mobile devices in network poor or network unavailable contexts. This small segment in Africa has a projected $12 billion opportunity by 2030 from digital IDs. Cardano digital IDs also tackle three segments that companies are looking to use to combat fraud. These are digital identities, data lakes and analytics, and blockchain technology. But Cardano is not the only horse in the race. There is competition in this space. And if you take a look at this image, you can see some of Cardano's competition and that everyone offers certain services. But Cardano is third generation blockchain, which means it goes beyond what traditional blockchain has been able to do. 
And what really sets Cardano apart in this situation is its ability to be flexible. It does not lock you into a certain set of parameters. It's offering you multi-blockchain support and interoperability that no other blockchain offers. Looking towards the future of Cardano in Africa, their plans for 2021 is to get decentralized IDs up and running and activate DeFi lending, eventually moving into DeFi payments and then DeFi insurance. Cardano is currently in negotiations with Ethiopia and each single contract one could add a minimum of 3 million users to the Cardano ecosystem. Think about how massive that is. The population of Ethiopia itself is 109 million people. And for reference, the United States has 330 and Canada has 37. With current negotiations for deals in agriculture, education, and transport, the total amount of new users, if all the contracts were won, would be 12.9 million new users into the ecosystem. Africa has 1.12 billion people, so if Cardano can get a foothold in Ethiopia, they stand a great probability of spreading out into the surrounding countries with hundreds of millions of more people. When asked, how does future blockchain activity that requires digital ID operate freely and independently of government control without contributing to the perpetuation of things like fraud? And can it operate without government intervention? And the answer to this question is there are initiatives that are beginning to exist that form trust between peer entities. And one such initiative is Trust Over IP out of the Linux Foundation. And the work these guys are doing with trust validation is very impressive. If you're not familiar with them, I suggest you check them out. While other DeFi projects are focused on building up huge market caps without understanding the users they're trying to serve, Cardano will build up a user base of people who use the digital ID solution, then expand into DeFi. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought. Leave a comment below. Most of the information in this video is sourced from a Cardano Virtual Summit presentation entitled How Decentralized ID Will Drive Economic Inclusion. If you want to see more videos from me, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.